second half now, which is um, a lot more bassoon, which is great. In fact, is it all bassoon? No. No. Mostly all bassoon. Um, we're going to start with a piece Mike wrote called Five Wapangos. And Wapangos are like dance dances. Um, he wrote these in uh, Mexico on a trip that we spent there. Um, and as you listen to them, there are five of them, but they're sort of a taka. So the only way to tell that you've gone into like the next one or the next one or the next one will be there's like a little bassoon interlude in between, so I get to rest. And uh, he just gets to kind of make stuff up, I guess. Um, so we've been playing together for a long time, and um, we actually finally got married because we thought, you know, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> might as well. <laughs> we, uh, we actually um, we met in the Eugene Symphony, which is where we still play. Um, he sat right behind me, and he was subbing in bassoon, and I was playing oboe, and I'd turn around, and he'd smile, this huge smile. And, Who wouldn't? Uh, <laughs> so, so we've been playing for quite a long time, about 20 years, and uh, the, the best part of these pieces, I just think, is how, mm, how different than they are from classical, since that's what I grew up playing. It's just been a great experience for me. Um, did you want to say anything about 
the particular wapangos that we're playing? Uh, these, these are five wapangos. They're all just named after little villages along the beaches of the state of Nayarit, which is between uh, Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta. So you, you wouldn't know one from the other by hearing them, but that's what the titles are. <laughs> and, and as Annalise has said, you'll, you'll be able to tell one from the other because I'm playing a little solo in between. <laughs> right, and so the name of the Wapangos, the first one is called Santa Cruz, which is the name of this precious little city, um, town, village. Um, the second one is called Las Islitas, the islands. Third one is Miramar, which is another name of a beach right near Santa Cruz. Um, Ophelia, Ophelia was the name of our duena, our uh, landlady in uh, Santa Cruz for three weeks, this wonderful woman, Ophelia. And then the last one is El Llano. And is there a town? It's a next, next door town. Next door town, okay. <laughs> so the cool thing about uh, this, these towns, actually most of the pieces were written around all these towns. And, uh, Santa Cruz had a cocodrilario, which is a little uh, crocodile nursery, basically. <laughs> and uh, so we got to spend a lot of time there and mm. see crocodiles. I'm wondering about. Thank you. 
Mozart is next. She has a program. Uh, I have a program. <laughs> so um, we're going to play an aria uh, called uh, Ruhe Sanft, Mein Holdes Leben, and it's from Zaida. Um, it's by Mozart, and um, Mike arranged it for us. We played it a long time ago in Eugene's Symphony. You might recognize it if you have a really good memory. Uh, I don't remember yeah, that. Like that. <laughs> anyway, it was when Marin Alsop was conducting, and she had a soprano, and he came in and sang this aria. And I just remember being so frustrated because I didn't get a play, um, like any good melody or anything. You know, I was just playing the backup, you know, second oboe or something rather. And um, it was very frustrating for me because I always loved to play the melody. And so I begged him to uh, arrange it for us, and he did. So, anything more? Yep, that's it. Okay. start out our klezmer tunes with unusual instruments, oboe and bassoon. So we're doing a couple of traditional tunes, Rebens Tanz, the rabbi's dance, and Freilacher Bulger, which is happy, fast dance. <laughs> so we played Sephardic klezmer to begin with, and this is more the Ashkenazi, uh, uh, Eastern European style klezmer. Might not be able to tell it on the bassoon, but anyway. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yoshka, Yoshka, well beloved in the um, Jewish community. I've uh, led uh, couples to be married at Jewish weddings with this next tune. And I also led uh, a person, um, well, I led the congregation in for a memorial in Corvallis for uh, an eminent leader of the community there with this same tune. So it's got a lot of heart. very short tunes to end our concert and we certainly thank you all for coming. Thank this you. is great. Well, it's just all of you? Yeah. Oh, they're actually right. three in this little medley. <laughs> but it's like two. They're really. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called Romanian Hora, Hasidol, and Bulgar. I, I don't expect you to remember that later on. <laughs>
very much. Thanks for having us. Oh, it was wonderful. Like Okay, I think we're going to turn the mic over to Beverly Sosi now, the director of the uh, Jacobs Gallery, and she's going to talk about uh, our next artist. Who's... Thank you. So sadly, Rajin, well not so sadly I suppose, she's in Mexico right now. She's soaking up a lot of the things that inspire her work here, like the folk art and the colors and stuff. So. I know her quite well, and I do know some of the processes she, she uses for her work. I will tell you if you don't know who she is, she's a local artist. She's been here, went to Yobo early years in art, but because of, and then as time went on, she had a family, had a business, worked too many hours, put art on the back burner. In, about six years ago, she retired and really became a full-time artist. She considers herself a mixed media artist and she's having a lot of fun kind of exploring where it goes. Mixed media, just what's nice about it, it means you can, you're always evolving and changing and trying new things. Um, for a while, at that retirement time, she explored plein air painting, but I think it just wasn't doing it for her. Well, it wasn't because she says so. <laughs> but because she started exploring these kinds of images, you see everything that isn't this work in the gallery is her work, and it's, well, the title of the show, Unexpected Journey, and then both of their names, this is the India series for him and for Rajin, it was Out of My Mind, or I think, yeah, Out of My Mind. At first I thought that maybe meant it was driving her crazy, but what it meant is these are all works from her imagination from her mind and she's just trying to process what she thinks and believes in and she's used a lot of human images as well as nature, birds, insects and a variety of things like that as you'll see if, and hopefully you'll have a chance to come back and look. A lot of her work is here is the paper clay process which only briefly I'll tell you if you haven't experienced it it's, a, it's like a paper mache product that dries, air dries she uses acrylic paint on any of the pieces, and sometimes she'll utilize collage with it. There are pieces on the very back wall back there that are all collage, no paper clay, on panels or on canvases. And, you know, she, if you had time to look around, she has little statements about it. She puts a lot of thought into this, and this is her way of getting who she is out of her, out of her mind. Um, so, I hope you enjoy it, and if you don't have time to look really, you know, closely at all of the work, you know, I have the pleasure in my position as artistic director to get, to put artists together, hang the shows, and, you know, I'm always, I haven't ever been disappointed in what comes in, so I thank the artists wherever Mike is, and, and Rajin, thank you.